Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods to Review. In this video, I'm going to be continuing my blind review of the series, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, by reviewing the Sky Egg arc. It was a whopping 23 chapters long, spanning from chapters 36 to 58, and it had a lot of focus on Captain Celebrity. It makes sense that he would try to hog all of the spotlight since he has a big ego, but did you know that he has an even bigger subscribe button, which gives him the Hot Rodsters Vigilante reviews right into his subscription feed. And it can bring you, yes you, some great entertainment as well if you just click it. But with that being said, let's get into the review. This arc was definitely amazing and it may be my favorite one so far. It is about equal to the versus Queen Bee arc in quality, so it is pretty difficult to decide which one I actually like more. One thing I definitely appreciated about this one was that Koichi took more of an active role in the story. In my last review, I kind of complained how he felt like a side character in his own story. While there were definitely some moments I did not like in that regard, this arc just made much better use of his character. First, let's talk about this boy's quirk evolution. Last arc, he learned how to stick to the walls like Spider-Man, and now he can shoot weak projectiles from his palms. I am not 100% sure how he was even able to apply his quirk in that way, but I also don't really care because it's so cool. Watching Koichi grow into more of a hero is always just very fun to see. However, I did not like how Pop Step was holding Koichi back by not allowing him to use this ability. It just felt like she was limiting his progress, which was inevitable anyway. Because of this, she just felt like an annoying roadblock, which sucked because she used to have much more importance. Not to mention, characters that halt progress like this can easily become very annoying, and I don't want to see her as an annoying little girl. Moving all of that aside, I also just love the roles that Koichi played in this arc. The first one that really stood out to me was when he helped Eraserhead take down the mutated trigger villain. While he didn't get the cool takedown scenes that Knuckle Duster got, seeing how his small contributions actually helped with real hero work was cool in its own way. I always enjoy seeing teamwork scenes. One of my favorite moments from the main series was when Deku, Tenya, Shoto, and Kirishima all worked together to come up with an intricate plan to rescue Bakugo. Every person in that operation mattered, which increased the possibility for failure and consequently increase the stakes. The same happened here, albeit to a less degree. The stakes really increased when Koichi took part in defending Captain Celebrity at the Sky Egg. Because even though his role in all of it seemed very small, if he failed, over 50,000 people would have been killed. I could really feel the tension and pressure within each panel due to Koichi being the main barrier of defense for all of these people. One character who got an insane amount of development this arc was Captain Celebrity. He made his first appearance in the Versus Queen Bee arc, I believe, and I did not like him at all at the time. He just seemed like a very arrogant, selfish jerk, but we finally got more context that added a lot to his character. Before we'd even learned about his backstory, I noticed that he was being a bit more considerate than usual. Still, he was sort of a jerk to Koichi, but we really got to see more of his heroic spirit leading up to the Sky Egg. And the story of how he met and fell in love with his wife just made my heart melt. It pushed me to recognize that he is a character who is worthy of my empathy. His past selfish actions begun to make more sense as well. For example, Captain Celebrity got sued for beating a villain up. Therefore, it makes sense that he would want to wait to do hero work until after the news camera showed up. It's implied that it helps him avoid liability by making it 100% clear who the attackers are, who the victims are, and most importantly, who the hero is. The fact that Captain Celebrity was becoming more of a sympathetic character really made me believe that he was going to die by the end of this. Especially since I know that the number one hero of the US in the main series isn't Captain Celebrity. Fortunately, nothing happened and that's cool, but if he did die, it would have been the saddest death of the entire My Hero franchise. The only death that I can remember from the main series was Sir Night Eyes, and I honestly didn't feel anything for him. So as much as I love Captain Celebrity now, I think him not dying was a huge missed opportunity, especially since it seems like he won't be a major part of any future storylines anyway. Near the end of the arc, it was revealed that he and Makoto would be going back to his hero agency in the United States. While I will miss all of these characters, I believe that their exit was very much necessary in order for Koichi to grow as a character. Makoto was amazing, but she was making Koichi's vigilante work a bit too legit. It almost seemed like Koichi became an official sidekick to the Captain Celebrity Agency, and that isn't good. He needs to find his own path as either a hero or a vigilante. On that note, I feel like there was too much of a focus on the pro heroes and police, and not enough focus on the actual vigilanteism. Like in the first three arcs, it was clear that Knuckle Duster, a vigilante, was the driving force behind the plot, meaning that he was the one who wanted to pursue the trigger villains for unknown reasons at the time. Now with the new villain, number six, it seemed as if his pursuit was mostly led by the cops and pro heroes, while Koichi was doing other, lesser important things. The manga isn't called My Hero Academia Pro Heroes, My Hero Academia Police, nor My Hero Academia Detectives. It's called Vigilantes, and there was a surprising lack of vigilanteism. 
But what was even more surprising was the fact that Knuckle Duster returned and he quickly brought the brutality back to this manga. There was just so much about him that was revealed, like his past as the pro hero O'Clock. I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, but All For One must have some connection to the villains of this series. He is one of the only people with quirk transferring abilities to my limited knowledge. I feel like his presence can add a bit more darkness to this manga and I am definitely excited for it. One thing that keeps coming up is the fact that Knuckle Duster is kind of like the All Might of this series. All Might swooped in at the last second to save the people at the Sky Egg twice, but his feats of strength were overshadowed shadowed by the battle that took place between Knuckle Duster and Number 6. Not only did he bring brutality to the battle, he also just made it more interesting with the complex strategies and deep understanding of his former quirk. Knuckle Duster just continues to amaze me, which is why he is definitely my favorite character so far. I was definitely glad that he came back. Overall, I certainly enjoyed this arc. Like I said at the beginning, it may be my favorite arc thus far. I would love to see all of this get animated someday. That's probably not happening anytime soon, but I can hold out hope, right? There was some narration at the end of this arc, not dissimilar to the narration at the end of the Versus Queen B arc. I remember then I believed that there was gonna be a time skip and I was definitely wrong, so I won't be making that prediction again but the narration itself was very interesting to me. I'm assuming Koichi was narrating and he said that next time, the danger would come to him all on its own. So what it seems like to me is that he is or will be targeted by someone. And maybe number six is alive and is jealous of him because he has Knuckle Duster's approval. I'm really not sure, but I definitely can't wait to find out what it all means. I guess the only way to find out is to keep on reading. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly my hero right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.